Welcome to creating brochures using Microsoft Word. Now the first thing you might want to do is Google Microsoft Word plus brochure templates. And once you click the search button you'll get a variety of choices. I went with the second one that says templates resumes. I made sure it was Microsoft Office. And then when you go to the site you get a variety of templates to choose from. So you want to go ahead, if you scroll down, you can see all the possible templates that you can download. And these are really attractive and professional looking. So I'm going to go ahead and click on brochures. Then when this pops up, you can see right here it's going to be publisher. If you want publisher, then you would download that. But if, since we're using Microsoft Word, we need to locate the Word option. And it tells you Word 2003 or later. So if you have Word 2003, you're obviously not going to pick up the Word 2007. So that's a possible brochure. So you want to kind of um, explore your options. Oh, there's a nice business brochure. Let's go ahead and click on that. When you click on it, then you're going to scroll down. And there's a download option. So you can click on the download option. Oh, there it is. It popped up in Word. How nice. So there you have the template in Word. And you would just go in and it's set up to where you would just come in and replace the text accordingly. So you can replace the images. So you don't let's say you're doing it on an animal brochure. You can go ahead and delete that. You can come into these text boxes and obviously replace the text. You can expand that text window to add more information. And I want to encourage you when you set this up to pay attention to the font scheme that you're using. So for example, if I use Century Gothic at size 12, I will consistently apply that to all my other text down here. Now the titles are a little different, so I'll come in here, change it to my Century Gothic. Now size 12 might be too big, so maybe I might do it on size 10. You need to play around. The point is, when you have relevant information, you want the font to be consistent. So if you're going to set this content, that's highlighted here with Century Gothic size 10 then you're going to do the same over here when you set up your text. You need to pay attention to those details. If you want the um, titles to stick out you might choose something different like Bernard and make it unbold and maybe size 14. Alright so then you would do that to all of them. But I set it to 14, unbold and I set it to Bernard and you want to be consistent. So you have some flexibility in here in changing the, the text and so forth. But let's say I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go to the internet and get a, bear, a picture of a bear right now. Make sure that when you're doing your image searches that it's set to strict safe search. That's really important. If it's not, you want to click on that and you're going to scroll down and you're going to go to the safe search filtering and make sure it says strict filtering. This is your responsibility to stay safe online. So now we're going to go ahead and, ooh, there's a, a little bear. So I'm going to click on that bear to get the bigger image. Always, I always get the bigger image because you can always make them smaller, but you can never take a small image and make it larger or you lose quality. So we'll go ahead and wait for this image to load. Once it's loaded, there's a couple ways you can get it onto that brochure. Now I like to put mine in auto shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this in a safe location. I'm going to right click and choose save picture as. And I'm going to go to a location on, a, on my computer. You might want to go to your H drive. That's where it's safe. And if I don't have an image, I do actually have a computer's folder. So I'm going to put in images. However, if you go to your H drive and you don't have folders, you want to click on this uh, create folder icon and type in images and hit the enter key. Once you've created an images folder, go ahead and open that. And notice the name for the file name. I always get in the habit of renaming them because usually when you get them from the internet, they have weird names that have nothing to do with what you're downloading. So I call it Bear. And then click Save. So now, now I'm going to go ahead and go open up my document. So I just realized I haven't saved yet. That is really not a good habit. I'm going to do file save as just in case something were to happen. I'm going to go to the H drive right now and save it in a little safe location. Now, if I didn't have a folder for that, I might call it, if it's for a science project, then I would maybe call it my science folder or something. 
to be organized for science class. Oop, there's already one named science. Hmm, that's really smart. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I'll call this um, bear brochure. Or just bear, yeah, bear brochure. Because that's what it is specifically. Now, what I'm going to do is I like to use auto shapes. So I'm going to go to the auto shapes. Now, if this window is not showing, notice where my cursor is. If you right click up here, I'm going to get rid of the drawing. That, that disappears, but that's the tool you actually need. So you want to right click and choose drawing. And notice along the bottom that the auto shapes has popped up. So I'm going to go to the auto shapes and choose basic shapes. And I like to put it in a rounded rectangle. Draw it out. Now you can't see it. You can't see the lines. Do you know why? If you go down here to the um, line color, set it to black, and then you can see it. For some reason it was invisible. It was a white line on a whack, white background. Once you have your shape drawn out, you would select that shape, go to the paint bucket, which is part of the drawing tools, choose fill effects, choose your picture option, select picture, and now you would navigate to that folder in the H drive where you just saved that image. And there it is. And then say OK. Isn't that nice? Some kids like to go to the auto shapes and go to lines and draw. Um, I like to use the curve option where you can come in and draw an irregular shape. Makes it a little more interesting. And then once that shape is closed, obviously I have no line. I'm going to go to line color and choose black. Paint bucket fill effects, picture, select picture, and so forth. So there's several ways that you could put images on here. If you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to insert a picture from file, you go to insert picture from file, then locate your image, which in this case, as you can see, is my H drive images folder. Now in order to move it, you need to go to the text wrapping tool. See that? I call it the doggy tool. Click on that and choose behind text, and then you can move it. To resize it, you would drag it from a corner towards the center. Never make a picture larger. You will lose quality. So hopefully that has given you enough to work with, and good brochuring to you. Ta-ta for now.